Jeffrey, good morning. What's going on there, young lad? Good morning, Mr. Abel. It is uh, it's stormy here. Wherever I am at the wherever mobile. you are, there's so much inside that head. There's just that's right. it's like a <laughs> it's like a typhoon going off all the time, right. just swirling We're, around. Yeah, wherever I am, physically or ethereally, right? Uh, just it could be anywhere. Okay, good. <laughs> just don't know. Good. Well, let's try to. Uh, We'll try to lock in on one little one little right. nugget today. Um, Focus my attention. Yeah, good, good uh, guys. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us today. And um, Brent Abel here, uh, Jeff Jacklich uh, next to me, and we are uh, dos amigos with uh, <laughs> uh, hunting dot com. We're here to help you guys uh, become a better player. And one of the ways we're to do that is through this podcast, whether you're watching it on video or, watch, or listening to it on, on audio. We are sharing stories from um, from the boots on the ground. I'm stealing that from Jeff. Yep. Uh, boots boots on the ground type <laughs> of stuff, stuff that we've gone through. Um, it is uh, all Shawshank all day. Another Jeff Jack. Boom, baby. Uh, boom, baby. <laughs> um, what does that mean? What does all Shawshank all day mean, Jeff? Well, if you, uh, if you know the movie Shawshank Redemption, um, uh, Timothy Robbins uh, plans his own escape out of prison. It's a period piece, 1930s, 1940s. And um, <clears throat> he, uh, he has to crawl through about 200 yards of sewer line out of prison to the— Literally human fresh, waste. Literally. Uh, to get to the—, the the freshwater creek and it's raining the scene is raining when he finally emerges from the sewer line and he bathes himself in, in clean fresh water and it, it's um, so for me you know all shell shank all day just simply means you got to do the work if if you want the result if we want to be out there at the end of this and and come up with um you know we're struggling with a first or second round win or we're struggling to be in the hunt quarter semis uh, even finals um and, and we're trying to get over these these benchmark uh, moments. Um, uh, uh, for me, it's you know it's all Shawshank all day. You got to you got to crawl through the muck, and it doesn't mean the muck is horrible. There is a there's a, you got to embrace it. You got to embrace that part of the journey, and um, well, that's and enjoy tough. it. I mean that's that's you know? I mean a lot of guys would not have done what he did in that movie. Um, Correct. <laughs> they might have gotten themselves right to the point of where he had to drop into the the sewer line. And they would right. go, I just don't want it this bad. Just, just can't don't want it this bad. And, and yeah. then go back and and uh, and live the rest of your life in that cell. Um, yeah. Well, no, I think I think it's a great way of explaining it. And there's no question that what whatever category of player that you fall into, whether you're playing national events, national tournaments, or you're playing – local events and you're you're getting through a round maybe two but you're getting stuck and you can't get to that next that next round where you know you're walking in there's only eight guys left in the draw and uh or you're a league player you know and and you want to actually have a new rating label you know you've been you've been stuck here with this label this ntrp label of whatever it is, <laughs> yes. which is so woefully inaccurate. Anyway, right. but you're stuck there, and you really want to get a new label, or you're you're content with the label you've got. You like playing with at that skill level, but you want to win a lot more of your matches. You want to up your winning percentage, or maybe, um, or maybe you're the Wednesday night doubles guy, regular scheduled match with your <laughs> buds. Uh, or maybe you're playing Thursday noon doubles with the same guy over and over. And you know what? You're sick and tired of having to buy the beers. You're sick and tired of having to, you know, not come away with the W on a week in and week out right. basis. And that's really, as you love to say, that's your gold ball. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's really. So, so we're here to help you guys uh, and gals. Um, Try to get there. Try to try to bump it up. And one of the one of the ways we're doing that is we've got uh, a video that we want to get to you about confidence. How do you build confidence in your game? And it's it's relative to all skill levels. It it doesn't matter if you're just starting, or if you're 
on the in the middle or if you're if you're contending for national titles you still want to make sure that your confidence day in and day out is that you can trust how you're going to play today you're pretty sure that you're going yep. to come out at, at pretty close to whatever the top of your skill level is today, uh, which you might have done yesterday. And yet today you come out and you lay an egg and thud, right. you're down here. <laughs> so what we call a skill level range, when you become a confident player is when you bring the bottom of that range up. So day in and day out, you're playing, you're playing predictably pretty darn close to the top of your skill level. And once you can right. get that skill level range minimized, that's when you can start to take that bump up to the next level. So we've got a free video for you how to do that. Um, it's private. It's free. But you uh, you got to get signed up for it. Got to jump on our email list. We promise no spam. Just go to goldballhunting.com. First name, email address. Click. And, uh, and you'll get access to it. Awesome. So... Um, Anything else on your mind, JJ, before uh, I put Actually, you in the no, hot seat today? Great. Well, we're, you know, we're talking about, you know, gold ball hunting and just, you know, full disclosure, you know, I'm still hunting for my first, you know, I've got a bronze. You, you've I've, been, you've been there. You're this close. I've, yes. I've, I've, I've seen the promised land, <laughs> you know, I've got a bronze, I've got a silver, um, but I'm still hunting. So, you know, just to let everybody know, you know, I've, I've got. I've got, you know, other titles and, you know, category two titles and singles and doubles and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, the gold ball for me is still a little bit elusive. So um, I'm continuing my hunt as well. So, uh, you know, just to just want to let let our our gold ball hunting fans know that, um, you know, it, it, it the journey continues. You yeah. Know? Well, and, and even if you've got the gold ball, the, the journey continues. Yeah, it's it's not. Not it's not once you get there that it's literally like riding a bike, right? I mean, <laughs> because once you get there, there are a lot of guys, there are a lot of gals who are right there as well. Yeah, and, right. And and it's 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 one of those things where when you do win one, at least in my case, when um, it's it's just been just keep showing up. Just keep showing up. You still got to do the work. You have to you keep still gotta doing keep the work. You still got to keep showing up. <laughs> and it's never a given. It's, uh, um, and you can't plan it. You can't cherry pick certain tournaments. Well, nope. uh, I'm looking at the entries. It's now 11.58 before the entries close <laughs> at 11.59. I think I can win this. Enter. You got to keep showing up. That's right. it. That's it. So uh, you're on the hot seat today, dude. It feels hot. Okay. Okay. And let me. I've forgotten what I was going to ask you. So um, I, I I do have it right here. It's all. It's all. Ah right uh, yes. So I got this quote, and I, I don't have the quote, but I got this thought from James Clear of Atomic Habits, which is a book I gave. Oh, you. I know another where James I Clear question. Yeah, and you'll still you'll eventually get to that book. I've, I've the stack I've given you is is probably. I know it's you know, like it's one yeah. down maybe. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna put them behind me, and so the audience can see, like, you know, how many right. books I'm behind that I need to read. And they're gonna you know? go. They're gonna go. Man, that stack's getting bigger. Bigger, right? What's going on? So, I'm gonna read this to you, and then maybe we have to kind of work work through it a little bit. But what did you, you, Jeff? What did you used to say about some part of your game back then that now you say something completely different? So it could be, I mean, I'll give you an example. I'll tee this up for you. I'll make it easy. I'll make the hot seat just lukewarm for you. So if you were to ask me that question, I would, I would say serve and volley. Someone said, aren't you serve and volley guy? Because I used to see you play serve and volley all the time. And I said, well, I used to play serve and volley 100% of the time. Right. Obviously in doubles, but also in singles. Well, maybe right around the early 60s, all of a sudden, <laughs> I didn't have as much coming in here. Right. So the serve was taking a little hit. And it just happened that I wasn't quite, maybe I was this far behind where I used to right. get in. So are you, you're reading, so you're reading my mind here, basically. Yeah, I mean, okay. Yeah, so, you asked the question, and in my head I'm kind of going, wow, is that like pre, 
Was that just, I mean, because there's moments too where it's different, you know, as you work on different things and then you achieve something. Right. And right. then you, and then you kind of have it for a while in, in this framework, you know, in this, in this part of a career. And then, and then something changes, injury or you're not playing. And then you got to kind of remaster everything a little bit and then you come back to it. So, yeah. So, so if it's a present day question, then it would be yes, uh, yes. Um, I mean, how do you think about today, about some part of your game that you thought was a 180 somewhere back then? Oh, completely, um, as you mentioned, serve and volley without a doubt. You know, I mean, uh, back in the day, um, I was, you know, spent just tons of time being able to hit my target with a serve and also upping the ante on the serve upping the pace on the serve so to be able to deliver um a, a pace serve uh, accurately swing serve out wide two you know two three four feet up from the corners um hitting the kicker out wide two three four feet up from the corner of the service box so literally my opponent is off the court the whole court in front of me there's no one standing in front of me by the time i get to the first volley so you know my basic plan was um, I'm going to punish this guy with a serve and come in, Spider-Man the volley, and we're done. We're done. Um, well inside <laughs> the zero to four hits, you know? Yeah. Um, and if he does get his mm. hand on the volley, um, good luck. Better be a screaming, pack. better be a screaming yeah. winner two inches yeah. up the line or cross court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so the difference now is, is, um, I still feel, feel very capable with my hands and accuracy with the volley. Uh, but the serve just through over the years, um, you know, uh, tweak, tweaking the shoulder, uh, you know, tweaking the neck a few times where, you know, not playing events for a year or so. And right now I'm doing work rehabbing my shoulders, um, even though I've been playing since, you know, back playing the seniors uh, national since 2012. Um, uh, the serve has probably fallen off the most. And that's the one thing that for me this year is the thing I'm going to be spending a lot of time on to to remaster it a little bit i'm probably going to have to tweak the motion a little bit and get that and that might be something you and i actually spend some time on the court with um because it's always good to have another uh great set of eyes on it um um so yeah so i have to be much mm -hmm. more cagey about serving and volleying now it's not it's no longer just the automatic go-to i can get myself out of a tight spot and just uh i'm going to mm -hmm. hammer the serve body into him he's going to chunk something up it's like predicting the future because you're so confident in the delivery of the serve. And I know I can cover, you know, 80% of the return balls. And I'm confident with my volley that I can make something, you know, great happen. Um, so I have to be much more cagey. Um, and it really, it, it's all about my opponent and their ability to return. Like, where are they at? And so that's how I, I gauge now. Um, when I deliver the serve and volley, it may be just be once in a game. Um, but I'm always looking to see how, you know, with the serve, how do I create um, a ball that I can get a hold of a forehand on, maybe, you know, shallow ball. So now it might be serve, um, shallow ball, you know, heavy ball into their backhand side or right up the center of the court at them. And then I'm in behind that, you know, so um, so that tactic adjust is probably the biggest one, most obvious one for me that's just blatantly there. Um, so I would still classify myself, you know, because in doubles I do. I'm I'm serving and volleying sure. first and first and <laughs> second serve, um, uh, but just because the 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 you know the 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 avenue that the that the the returner has to hit the ball to is basically right back to me. Right. Um, right. Right. And so, uh, yeah. like I said, I'm very confident still with my volley. Um, just doing that journeyman stick in the first volley right back deep you know back at that at the returner so but in singles though i've got to be much more cagey where i I might serve in volley once or not at all in a, in a service game just depends on what's happening and i might mm -hmm. i might hold i might hold on to that tactic um uh to a little bit different part it, you know maybe near the end of the first set i haven't done it yet um and maybe i've broken him and maybe i'm serving for the set at 40 15 i decide you know what I'm going to throw a big kicker here in on a first serve, get the ball up around his eyeballs, up in the backhand side maybe, and with the kicker, I know I'm going to get another extra step and a half in closer to the net, and I haven't done it yet. And so I might take that little margin, that little cushion of a 40-15 lead or 40-love lead, 
and throw in there and see if I can get this done right now. Or if um, nothing so else, just, 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 just to give him a different look so that he's got yeah. another thing to consider right. uh, about what might be happening in the future so that he can't, at least in his mind, that you're not predictable about what you're going to right. about what you're to do. So, yeah, no, there's a, I, I think for me too, it's, um, I used to think, I used to think when I was younger that every ball, is an approach shot opportunity. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and it worked for a while. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it didn't work. So right. It worked until it didn't work. It did, you know, it and it's interesting because I probably went through a period of a couple of years when it, when it stopped not working as it did before, but I just kept my head buried in the sand and I didn't want to consider and it wasn't so much, well, I guess it was the age thing, but I didn't really want to consider that, that I couldn't somehow work harder to recapture what it was that I used to do. And at some point it was like, you know, a, like, like the two by four whack against the side of the head going, you know, bang, yeah, dude, it's never coming back. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So the one twenty, the one twenty serve ain't coming back. That's right. So it was, uh, and I guess you know the way I'd answer it. What do I think then that I do now is I really didn't really put much emphasis on on the sense of when I would say, well, every ball is an approach out opportunity, which to me meant I'm coming in. You got you got your shot right here, dude. You got it right here. Right. I'll give you a foot over here. I'll give you a foot over here. If you can top it, foot over my head, great. But if you don't do that, right. then then points over. And so for me though, it was really an excuse not to feel comfortable staying in the point. Right. Develop the other aspects of your game that might actually make Make your job of wanting to approach and volley a little easier, actually. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so now it's it's a sense, and I still fight that feeling sometime of being comfortable just sliding another standard, brain dead, simple as can be, slice backhand over there into that quadrant, and and being okay to stay in the point, and not looking at that as well. Right. I got to approach now. Certainly, there are some balls that if it comes up short. Well, you're darn right. I mean, I'm I'm coming in and I'm going back to the old, the old Brenny 1.0. Right. I'm going back and I'm saying here I am. But um, and there's no question that I still serve in volley. I mean, doubles all the time. There's there's never a right. serve and stay back. Uh, but in singles, I'm thinking. And I think that what you were saying more strategically in terms of the serve for me being more of an approach shot. So can I swing him out like I might do on some kind of an approach, get him out wide and then just come into a spot and it doesn't have to be super tight in the net. But if I've got him out there, do side right-handed me serve, slide him out wide. Right. If I've got him out there, all I need to do is just out quick, whatever he gives me back. And then right. just, just throw the puck in the corner over there and let him run. Kind of take it from there, but it's more strategic than it is big serve, big volley, um, you know, big boy type of serve and volley stuff. It's right. it's, and I'll tell you the other thing too. Um, I used to think drop shots were were for, you know, pushers and wimps and baby boys and and, and blah blah blah. <laughs> and now I've come to realize that oh my god, the dropper, it's a massive weapon. Huge. Huge. And so, I mean, there's lots of ways that I think about the game now that, that I certainly right. didn't think. And, and uh, not that it's diametrically opposed to what I used to think back then, but I just didn't think back then about a lot of the stuff I think about now. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, the, uh, you know what's different, you know, I mean, that, that the basic premise of the question is, you know, then, now. Uh, yes, no. I mean, so... And the idea is that, you know, we're, you know, we're focused here in this. Our little conversations here are focused on, you know, gold ball hunting, senior, senior tennis, whether it's league tennis or, or your national player and you're hunting for that gold ball. Um, it, it's different, you know. So, you know, I trained 
you know, my whole, you know, junior, junior college, college, division one ball, playing, you know, the tour. And I, I trained all of that to be able to do exactly what I just said. I'm going to crush a first serve, be hyper accurate, and Spider-Man the first volley. And, and that's my basic plan all day long. I'm going to do that. And so training endlessly, take that backhand mid-court, slice it up the line, cover the line, make the guy make the you know cross court in front of you, cover that so, that, so you've got that covered. But you're going to make him pass the ball in front of you um, you know, once you approach up the line and then, okay, forehand, I approach down the line and da, da, da. Well, you know, things have changed, you know, um, uh, stroke technique has changed. Um, the, the, the technical, so the, uh, technical, I mean the, the, the actual materials that rackets are made of now, you know, we've got space materials that, um, literally sometimes I think, um, I'm hitting the ball harder now than I was when I was 24 with yeah. a wooden racket in my yeah. hand or, or just the new early graphite frames that were going on at that time. Um, <clears throat> which means that, you know, I know with me on a dead run and just flicking my wrist with this space material racket that I can hit a dinger and like do damage. Right. And so, so tactically, you know, my progression in this whole deal has been, I, I literally had to override my, 24 year old player instincts and remaster the way I think and how I construct a point. So yes, I had to go back to the drawing board and kind of go, I need to retrain some new patterns. I need to retrain, um, tactically how I use my serve re you know, retrain tactically how I'm hitting the return because I need to construct the point differently now than I did then. And, and so now you got to relook at your toolbox <laughs> And what's in there, and how do I construct a game now that is sustainable, you know, repeatable and sustainable? And so I, it's a great question because this is where I think some players lose their way is is that they're not they're not being honest about what their skill set is now as opposed to what it was even two years ago, right, right, or three years ago or four years ago. Right. It changes. <clears throat> And this is where we have to be, you know, the adaptability um, and our honesty in our own mind, you know, to, to well, look. look at it squarely and go, OK, guess what, Jeff, <laughs> you're not the fastest horse in the barn anymore. OK, OK, I get that. I, OK, I, I admit it. I, I throw myself upon the mercy of the court. I'm not. You know, so so what does that mean? It doesn't mean that I can't, you know, compete at the highest level or, or get my gold ball or any of that. It just means how am I going to approach this now and how am I going to use tactically what I have in my toolkit to to be successful? Well, yeah, and I think the other, you know, if we're talking about tactics and strategies based on your reality of, <laughs> of I, I can't do what I used to do. So I've got to figure out, well, what tools do I have in the box that I can realistically do now at this age? But the other thing I think that we all got to be smart about is that another, another way to strategize is based on that guy or that gal over there. And right. it's kind of like we hear the cliche of, of offense. Well, you, you just got to take what they give you. So, I mean, I play guys now who used to be little gnats out there. I mean, these were little <laughs> water bugs that you could hit the, right. the crap out of the ball and they're going, ho-hum, thank you very much. Now, something's happened, right? Either there's been an injury or maybe they've been, the food bag's been on a little bit too often, too much. <laughs> Whatever. You know what hey, I mean. Five or ten can change things. <laughs> That's right. And, and the court's bigger for them now than what it used to be. Right. Um, so... I guess my point is is that um, is that I'm now looking at what is this guy giving me over there? What what and, and it may not be my most comfortable deal, right? And so I'm going to sort of cherry pick out of my toolbox. Well, he's giving me this. Can I actually play the shot that will take advantage of what he's giving me? Right. And hopefully, hopefully the answer is a realistic one, which is yes, as opposed to, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, man, I got that thing. Sure, sure. Right. Right. No, you, no, you don't. Maybe. <laughs> no, you don't. 
<laughs> so anyway, I just thought I just thought we should also add that as a condition that you know you've yeah you got to be starting to think more realistically about what is now as opposed to back then, and 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 bring your opponent into that equation, right? Because God, I remember I remember in the thirty fives I played a guy. It's one of my first year, maybe my first year in the 35s, and uh, you know, I was just getting into senior tennis, and I was really fired up, and I had to play a guy in, uh, it was a Sacramento tournament, I guess. Anyway, a guy named Steve Turpin, and <clears throat> yeah. does that name ring a bell at all? Yeah, it does, yeah, all yeah. Right. So Steve Turpin was, I think, from Sacramento. Um, Anyway, we actually the tournament was up in Auburn. We, we played in Auburn, and and that one summer when I played some uh, junior tournaments when I was fourteen, you know, I got beat by Van Dillon, O and O, like two or three times, and I got beat by Steve <laughs> Turpin, Steve Turpin, uh, like O and O, maybe, you know, right. a bunch of times. And so here I am. He, he was he's just on your checklist of guys you owed whoopings to. Well, that's it. Yeah, but but you know? <laughs> so here I am, and this is goes back to last our last episode, but when you asked me about being the number one seed and what do you do? So here I am, I show up at this 35 tournament and I'm seeded one. And uh, I've got Steve Turpin in the first round. Woohoo! And I'm just going, this is like the worst draw in the history of life. Draw making, right? Yes. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, the draw comes out and I'd sort of seen it somehow or I knew what it was and in a few days before. So like I didn't sleep for about three days just going, Oh my God, I'm going to come out. It's going to be like, I'm 14 years old again. And, uh, this guy's just going to kick my butt. And so we show up and, uh, I check in and, and, um, and I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be telling the story, but I'm going to tell it because, um, <laughs> anyway, so I, I check in and, uh, and uh, oh, Brent, well, yeah, here, here's Steve, and Steve's sitting next to me, and I, or standing next to me, and I didn't recognize the guy. And uh, over the years, Steve had, you know, he, he'd become a great player as a junior and went on and did some great things, and, and, but he'd sort of stopped playing tennis and was probably raising a family. I don't think we talked too much about it. But it was clear that he was no longer in, in Ten tennis shape. In great shape, right? right? You can take that any way you want. Um, and we went out and sure enough, I think we got to two all in the first cause I was just scared to death. So right. dumb, so dumb. But anyway, and, um, and then he just started getting pooped. He just started getting tired. And the next thing I knew was, well, he can't run for this ball over there. Okay. Okay. Well, right. let's, let's do a lot more of that. Okay. Right. And sure enough. And yeah, I ended up, I don't remember what the score was, but it really wasn't that close. Right. And, uh, he was very gracious at the end. I just said, hey, man, nice going. I said, do you remember when you kicked my ass when I was, you know, <laughs> 20 years ago when I was 14? He goes, I really don't. Yeah, sorry. I said, I really it don't. It was for me. And he said, yeah. <laughs> and he, I said, well, you did. You did. And uh, and we had a nice chat afterwards. But yeah. I think, you know, that's, that's just a, a reality check that um, as we age up um, is that. Things change. Someone that used to beat your booty like a drum right. may not have the same, if you underhand feed them, sure, they got the great looking shots they had before, right? but this is not a game of underhand feeding. This is, dude, you're going to yeah. have to run over there to get this ball. So I think we've got this one pr pretty well worked out here, JJ. Um, <laughs> anyway. That's good answer. Question. Good answer. Love. Uh, I love your answer. Uh, let's wrap it up. What's the next thing for everyone to do right now? Like us, share us, and subscribe to us so you uh, you you get notified. No, notified. <laughs> no, you, so get you get notified. No, you get notifications. <laughs> I... Notified. Yes. Um, uh, when the next video comes out. That's so right. uh, you know, hopefully, we're giving you stuff, some nuggets that you can uh, glean from our talks and learn. Um, cause it's just, uh, tennis is one of the greatest learning tools on the planet. I, it's just a phenomenal, uh, game and it, you get to meet phenomenal people and you are sometimes forced into extraordinary circumstances that, uh, you end up, there's a lot of personal growth that happens on this journey. Yeah, so, for, um, for sure, it, it, it's, for sure. It, 
it's just great. So we encourage you to jump in with us. And, uh, and really what we're helping you guys, we're, we're at least we're hoping to help you guys get that, that really cool, that tangible feeling of when you know, my God, I'm playing better. I'm just playing a little bit better day in and day out uh, than three yeah. months ago or six months ago or a year ago. But there's a tangible feeling that you you can relate to where you are right now and you can remember where you were then. And uh, is that... Uh, that was an incoming, now it's is not. That, is that an incoming student going... <laughs> I can't figure this out, Jeff. Can you help yeah. me, man? Right now, I gotta know. I gotta play my first round match in ten minutes. Tiebreaker, third set. He's on his right. cell phone, giving you like, "What do you do, Jeff? What do I do?" <laughs> punt. Uh, punt. So, um, anyway, guys, what we want to do is help you with your confidence to build confidence because you got to have that as a as a solid foundation to your game. All the other stuff doesn't really matter if you're not confident. And as we talked about in the beginning. Your confidence is really going to be built when you start to take your skill level range from one day here and the next day you're down yeah. here. And we're going, to, we're going to help bring that bottom skill level range up so you can start to work your way up to, uh, to a little bit better skill level range. And the way they get that video, it's a private video that you and I did on confidence recently. It's private, but it's free. Uh, either below the video right here, there's a link that will take you to goldballhunting.com. Or if you're listening to this just, you know, on your phone or just open up your mobile browser, www.goldballhunting. You know, I think the triple W thing's all done anyway. I think it's good. Yeah, anymore. yeah. Just go goldballhunting.com. And, all uh, good. you got to put in a first name, email address, or to get in our email list, we promise not to spam you. But uh, you will then get immediate access to this video on confidence. JJ, on that, we're done today, man. Everyone get out there. Have a spectacular day. In fact, take it up one level. Help someone else. Have an amazing day. And we'll Indeed. do this again tomorrow. Can't wait. All right, man.